President Trump, on behalf of all the MAGA patriots in America, I want to thank you for the historic victory for white life in the Supreme Court yesterday. And that's just a taste of the craziness that was said by Republican leaders this week. And wait for the ones that will blow your mind in the rest of this video. In just a week, the Supreme Court has become an activist court fully, completely. But perhaps even more harmful is what this has activated in our politics. It has given permission for every hateful, bigoted opinion to come out front and center in our politics. The Supreme Court suddenly decided to overturn settled precedent and just start deciding cases involving the way of life in America and the rights we have held dear for decades based simply on their personal opinions, which is exactly the opposite of what judges and justices are supposed to do. Now, we of course all know that judges let their personal influence affect their decisions, oftentimes, which is why we care so much which president gets to nominate them. But it is another thing entirely, a much more egregious thing, to do so by overturning five decades of settled precedent and the way of life in America that we had progressed to from a darker, more backwards time before that. This is such blatant overreaching that even Republican Chief Justice John Roberts admonished them for what they did with abortion, ignoring the concept of judicial restraint, which is to rule narrowly while making the least societal change possible. He sided with them in upholding the Mississippi law restricting abortion after 15 weeks, but he ruled against them in that decision needing to also overturn Roe v. Wade. And when a conservative justice slams the other conservative justices, you know there's some bonk going down. In just a week, the court has contradicted itself based on political motivations, saying in back-to-back -back days, no less, that the states do not have the right to restrict gun rights, making it federal law now that there can't be a proof of need requirement for a concealed carry permit, because the conservative court is pro-gun, that's why. And that states at the same time do have to decide on abortion rights because there can no longer be federal law that protects it because the conservative court is anti-choice and anti-women's rights. Totally opposite decisions due obviously and clearly to their political interests and nothing else. Both of these decisions will, of course, very tragically lead to innocent people dying. The Supreme Court also during this last week reversed five decades of precedent separating church and state, ruling that a coach can kneel and lead prayer at the 50-yard line immediately after games, when decade after decade the court confirmed that activities like that were not allowed because it made students feel coerced to participate, thus infringing on their own religious liberty. They decided this, and another case, saying that federal funding now has to go to religious schools as well, so the tax dollars of people of other religions or of atheists are forced to be spent on schools of one particular religion. They did this because the conservative court wants this to be a Christian nation. All in the last week, they have done all of this. And they also ruled in this last week that if police do not properly read someone their Miranda rights, that the cop cannot be held responsible in civil court. The conservative court did this because Republicans almost always side with the police over the common man. It's not rocket science to figure this stuff out, people. Those last three decisions won't kill anyone, but they just make America a much creepier, scarier place to live. This is an unreal, sweeping, huge swing to the right for this country, all in a week. But beyond the very real, direct, negative consequences these rulings will have on our country, they also have spurred an immediate release of every disgusting, disgusting statement and morally bankrupt opinion possible. Just in the few days since the Roe decision, genius of the Congress Lauren Boebert said she is sick of the separation of church and state entirely, and the church should decide what government does, and that's the way the country was supposed to be. Which uh, is just 100% made up garbage nonsense and the opposite of what the country is supposed to be and what the founders intended. The reason we had so many overreaching regulations in our nation is because the church complied. The church is supposed to direct the government. The government is not supposed to direct 
the church. That is not how our founding fathers intended it. And I'm tired of this separation of church and state junk that's not in the Constitution. It was in a stinking letter, and it means nothing like what they say it does. But every day is opposite day in the head of the shooter zoning pew pew shoot em up congressperson that hopefully will be gone from our lives very soon. A representative from Illinois, Mary Miller, running for re-election, with Trump standing right behind her, thanked him for this historic victory, quote, for white life in the Supreme Court. And of course, Trump did not jump in to rebuke it. He in fact smiled. And of course, the crowd cheered it on. Want more? Sure, how about this? Insanity. Senator from Texas, John Cornyn, replied to a tweet from Barack Obama, FYI, the nation's first black president, also only black president, decrying the Roe decision, comparing it. So Cornyn comes in and compares the end of Roe and the reversing of, of abortion rights to the decision to end racial segregation in this country. Like those are equal things, people's private medical decisions and a morally insane policy we had in our nation that didn't count black people as humans and wanted to keep them separate from white people. That's a moral equivalence. And as if you needed any more evidence that the Supreme Court decisions are causing this, words like this are even coming from the Supreme Court itself. Supreme Court Justice Clarence Sexual Harasser Thomas just wrote, quote, in future cases, we should reconsider all of this court substantive due process precedents. Close quote, and named the cases that make contraception available to married couples and that made same-sex activity and same-sex marriages legal. Interestingly, Thomas, a black man married to an insurrectionist white woman, did not include reversing the Supreme Court precedent that made interracial marriage legal. Hmm, I wonder why that would be. Weird. Maybe because it affects him personally? Proving yet again that these selfish Republicans want only to control you in every way possible, except for when it might actually affect their own lives, because they lack empathy like sociopaths do. Kind of like when Dick Cheney was for every horrible policy, except strangely he supported gay marriage. Why? Because his daughter is gay. So here's where we are in America now. The cat is out of the bag. Pandora's box has been opened. And you better hope that every Republican politician and conservative justice suddenly gets pregnant unexpectedly and learns they have an LGBTQ child and is arrested without being read their rights and is forced to pray in a publicly funded place. Otherwise, they're all coming for you. And nothing we can do about it, I guess. I'm Ben Glebe. Check out my full abortion debate against Charlie Kirk on my YouTube, youtube.com slash and share it wide. And follow me at Ben Glebe on social media. I'm releasing a short new stand-up clip five days a week.